but if, if you think about it, when Mourinho got the sack, right, this is actually how the uh, the team was performing. Yeah. Right, I think the Liverpool will win, but um, you know, for Arsenal, fans, we did not ask you oh, about oh, Arsenal. Oh, now. There's a deliberate but reason. Rashford's form has been deepened, but again, it's not so much putting Rashford on the bench. Who comes in and does the job? A very good day to you all, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, mamas and papas. I am Jimmy, and this is your Kings of Football show brought to you by Budweiser, the King of Beers, giving you what we do best, the English Premier League on a platter, where we're giving you all the information you need, in-depth analysis, as well as insightful information from the experts themselves. And boy, do we have an expert in-house today. Before we get to that, let me get to my king, my brother, my fellow co-host, the one and only or Zomena, who's in the house with me. Welcome back home, my brother. What are you doing, my G? I'm feeling good. How are you feeling? <sighs> feeling a little bit hammered, to be honest. I just... <laughs> 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 oh my God. What a night it was, I know, right? I know, I know it was. We always are optimistic, and that's one thing I know that every Arsenal fan has in yep. common. We are never lost for hope. One man that would like to kill our hopes and our dreams, even some of our aspirations as well, would be a man that is known as a, an, an antagonist uh, when it comes to Arsenal fans. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, I will not do any grand intro for him. I will just introduce him as he is. Puja, how far? I'm good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> good to be back. I'm back to back now, not like us now. Hey. Uh, you know, I'm in for the for the show. <sighs> Having said that, let's introduce our guest, our man of the moment, the man that I did tell you that is um is a masterclass in himself. Uh, he's been to uh, many uh, international competitions. He's also been a veteran of the English Premier League. That is our focus today. Ladies and gentlemen, having played for Wolverhampton Wanderers and, of course, a number of teams in the Premier League, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a former Super Eagles international, Shay Olofinjana. Very well, thank you. It's nice and cold in England, believe it, believe it or not. Oh, it's getting and, cold. Um, the winter is just beginning to... The breeze is just beginning to come in, so it's you can see I'm I'm I'm, I'm well suited. I, I can tell, I can tell, I can tell. Uh, but we're expecting you back <laughs> home soon, though. I will be with you very very shortly. Don't worry about uh, that. I have a couple of places that I want you to take take your time and enjoy one beer with me. You know, son, one on one, me and you. No shaking, we're there now, Jimmy. You know. Ah, confirm, confirm. But it depends on what you say today. Don't go and be like Puja. Be on my side. Well, let me just confess. Anything Arsenal we're not talking about today, I presume. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. I know where I'll go to for Arsenal conversations. Also, you with me, right? One hundred percent. So, Puja, you have already thrown your grenade. You took it, chest down. Nothing to us. Can we move on now? We can. All right. Our hot take for the week is this: Nobody wants to talk about match uh, Arsenal, right? So let's talk about Manchester United. Mm. They seem to be doing way worse than Arsenal. What is the situation with Marcos Rashford? Should he actually be a starter for Manchester United in their quest to pull themselves out of the doldrums? Or is the manager the problem? Well, I, I think, you know, it's from two, you know, perspectives. You look at it very well, you know, Eric Ten Hag, um, you know, came like, a, you know, um, a man with so much discipline, you know, if you can discipline the, one of the greatest players in, 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 in football, talking about Ronaldo. Now you have to, you know, do the same, you know, he did the same to Sancho. You have to do the same to Rashford. Rashford just won't go um, in 10 matches. You know, talking about the Premier League, he has been out of sorts. Um, you know, it looks, you know, like um, the confidence is off. And you, right. need to, you need to put it on the bench. Yeah. If you are, you know, the Eric Tenag, we know, with so much discipline, you need to now pass it across board. You know, the, the excuses, you know, upon excuses for Rashford have to stop. You need to find a way because it's not creating chances. You know, if yeah. you're not scoring goals and you have a couple of assists, you can still fly. But he's not scoring goals, he's not creating assists, he's out of sorts. And I think, you know, maybe against Fulham, he should give him a rest. I don't think, you know, he's in the right place when it comes to, you know, the, his mental Did health. he just get a new contract? Oh, he got a new contract like two years ago. Okay, so it's, not, he got, the, it's not the Obama Young syndrome. Yeah, and if, and of course, he's the most... Uh, he's the highest paid highest player like Over 400,000 um, you know, uh, pounds. Okay, so let me throw this to, to Shay then. Shay, then w what seems to be the problem... With Marcus Rashford, um, from a player point of view, how do you go from the man that comes through for Manchester United and England to a point where there's conversations about you not starting? Like Puja just said, maybe you should sit out the game and watch from the outside. Uh, well, sitting out a game or two will not do Rashford any any uh, harm. Uh, 
it's a Manchester United player, no doubt about that. But again, it's one of the most um, influential player in a, in an average team right now, in my mm, own opinion. Mm, um, mm, key word. He's, um, again, just to, just to sort of go back a little bit, I, I think Manchester United's problem is not just Rashford. It's a bigger problem than that. But again, as we say in football, as, as a football player, you do what you're told to do. You just do your job. Forget about any other politics or any other events with it, that's happening within the football club. Um, Rashford's form has been deepened, but again, it's not so much putting Rashford on the bench. Who comes in and does the job? Would it be Martial? Would it be Ganacho? I don't think Ganacho is ready to start a game. Coming in to play 10, 15 minutes here and there doesn't justify starting a game of football for me. So we can talk about Rashford is not in form, it's not this, it's not that. It's about the replacement. In a faltering team, is almost reaping the benefit of what the team is, at, is doing at the moment. So. I will still continue to play him, have, encourage him, probably play him in a different position. He can play as a, as a center, center forward as well, just to almost re, re, press his, the, set, the reset button in a way to sort of get mm. him going. Because when he's, when he's on, on song, I mean, we, we know what he can do. So I, I never like to say some players want to get their manager sacked, but this mm. is actually how players mm. perform mm. When, when, when they feel like everything the manager is saying. If you think about it, when Mourinho got the sack, Right. This is actually how the uh, the team was performing. Yeah. Right. When Sosha had his problems, this is actually how the team was performing. Even I mean, down to when uh, when the interim manager came in. Uh, what's his name now? Um, Ragnik. Ragnik. When when R- Rafael Ragnik. Ragnik came in, this was the same uh, same way. These same players were performing. <laughs> now, mind you, Eric Ten Hag has has gone in and brought in some of his own players. He spent his he spent uh, a whole lot of money as well. But for whatever reason, the players that he's brought on. They actually haven't performed well. I mean, look look at Anthony. Right. Anthony's a sorry excuse of a winger. He wow. doesn't do anything well. He, do, he doesn't run in behind teams. Yeah. He doesn't he doesn't go past his man. Doesn't he create. doesn't score goals. He doesn't create chances. So what exactly does he do for the team? It brings and, um a, a lot of color. Exactly to his hair anyway. Uh, and, and 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 the funny thing is, like and, and when you when you look at the way Ten Hag went about uh, trying to discipline Cristiano Ronaldo, went about trying to discipline uh, Jadon Sancho. Now, if you're in that locker room, you're looking at him like, yeah, but Anthony actually isn't any better than these players as well. But then you're actually trying to find a way to mm. put him back into mm. the team. And if you look at how petulant Anthony is whenever he's on the pitch as well. So if you have all those factors in, you're going to have a manager that maybe has actually lost his dressing room. I mean, we know that there's an international break coming, but the performance is from now leading to that international break because we know that most times managers get the sack during the international break. He actually is in danger for no, sure. No, I, I kind of agree, uh, but in saying that, it, it does make sense. If you're going to get rid of a coach, um, get rid of him in, with good time to understand what the team needs going into the January transfer window mm-hmm. because obviously you need players in January. You need to change something. So if you're going to change something, change the coach now. One name that's come up is Deserby. If you're Deserby, do you leave Brighton and go to United or do you just still stay at Brighton? I would go to United. First of all, because the opportunity to step up as a manager who is ultra confident uh, in himself, as you can see, taking on the Brighton side and making them believe that they can actually challenge for the title, um, as against going to a team that is expected to challenge for the title. Um, they are in Europe at the moment. They are playing in the, cha- in the, in the, Champions, in League. the Champions League. Yeah. So it's a step up. And obvi- obviously with an opportunity to earn more financially, uh, you get to protect yourself oh. I mean, if he's going to go in there, the, 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 he will definitely earn more. Of course. He will. He will. In terms, yeah. in terms of, in yeah, terms of nego- if I go there, I'll negotiate for more salary than I was getting before. Yeah. And I will be able to put in a clause that will protect me if, well, I, I, do I, get si- I, if I do get fired. I will move. As, no, no, I, I will move on some conditions. That's what I'm saying. They I will put a flush, clause in. Yeah, they need to flush a lot of players from that mind. Which is the got. only reason why you get a coach in at this time. Because you need him to yeah, see nah, the but problem. No, but, but I, th- I think Jimmy's right. Because, because let's be honest, the United job is actually one of the the jobs in world football that that as a make manager, or break you. Manager or a player, you have to go. Yeah. If, if, yeah. They, if they come calling, you, you have to go. Because at the end of the day, regardless of what happens, let's say he goes to United and really doesn't work out well for him, he can actually take a step down and go to another club. Because it's not very often in a manager's career that you get the opportunity to say that you you're, you're a manager of a club like Manchester yeah, United. Yeah. So I mean, for any manager that gets the call. It will be a, it will be one of the most attractive jobs in world football to coach Still Manchester is. United. Still is. Yeah. So I don't see it as a problem for, of getting the options is picking the right one. Matt, you're ready to speak. Your hand is waving. Uh, I'd like to know if you are. 
uh, Manchester United fan, or what team do you support? Good man, um, I support Arsenal, man. That's You're an Arsenal well, fan? Ah, uh, she you won't be happy. Yeah, I'm an Arsenal fan. <laughs> Man, come on, Tom. You shouldn't be. You shouldn't be. <laughs> 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 Man, people have to some kind of um, resilience right now. They need that because they can't keep going around the circle of sucking, placing them and going around again. Right. You know, going on a blip of little good form and going back to the status quo, you know. They have to stick yeah. to a principle. So I think they have to yeah. back their hand. Um, I, I feel, I feel, um, Tenga will go, will go back to the basics. He's okay. going to play Bruno where he's meant to play him. Um, I feel he might, he might shoot Mount to the right hand side. I think that would be his best bet, but play Bruno where he's meant to do. All right, thank you so much. Uh, keep your keep keep listening. We might come back to you and get your Arsenal opinion. But for now, we're sticking to what we're doing right now. Thank sure, you so sure. much. I'm all, I'm all here. I appreciate you, my brother. Thank, thank, you, much, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, Shay, what's your thought? I think they need to come out with a big statement. The, the, the hierarchy of the football club now need to come and back whoever the manager is to then say, you know what, we're a work in progress. We've messed up in the last few years. We're, this might take two, three seasons. Yeah. Don't expect us to be top four or whatever. If we, if we do, it's, it's going to be a miracle. But we're going to rebuild the club. Yeah. They should come up with the, that kind of statement. and Everybody will understand. Rather than trying to go into the theory of, yeah, we're, we're a big club with Manchester United of, of 10 years and what have you, it's not working issues. at the moment. And, and I think it needs changing. The question that we've raised constantly on this show is, we have no idea what style of play Eric Ten Hag Oh, I know what this style of play is. They, they play like a mid-table team. No, they but that's they so, sit so, back so, and take so for me, soak up pressure. No, no, but, but that's the problem is because, and even that, they don't do that really well. Oh, my they, Lord. They, I mean, no, no, but, no, but, no, no, but Jimmy, but <laughs> let, let, let's be honest. They're not a great counter-attacking team. They're not a great possession-based team. They're not a great team with the high press. They're not a great, great team even with the half press as well. So you watch United, and if you watch many of the teams in the English Premier League, you can understand what the manager is trying to get from his teams. Even Brentford, we understand what what uh, yeah. what what what, uh, what Thomas Frank is trying to get from his teams as well. But you've what Eric Ten Hag has been there. This is like his second season. He's had two full preseasons, right? But we still have no idea what the style of play for Manchester United is. And for me, that for me is a bigger worry more than uh, thinking about the players that he's going to put in the team or the formations. Well, um, before I you know um, I dissect this, I think for the my United game, I think. Um, Eric Tenag have to do a quick fix, you know, two fix. You know, they need to start scoring goals. Right. The the strikers have not, um, you know, had it good in front of. So goal. who's going to score? No Rashford. No. Yeah, Rashford. You know, Ireland. You know, Marshall, Ganacho. They've not had one. Is it goal. that Ireland flattered to deceive? But I don't want to start no, asking no, you questions because there's too so much to go into. Um, of course, you know, he has not had no goal in the Premier League yet. Um, just one goal among the guys in front, and they've been considering goals. So you need to shut off your, you know, your kiosks. In terms of blocking your home, and of course, you need to start scoring goals. Staying with you now, let's go over to um, the Etihad Stadium. Uh, Manchester City will be playing host to one of their many regular customers uh, that donate goals to them at will, Bournemouth. The strength and depth in depth in, in the squad is, for me, is unbelievable. And it's what's been standing them out. And that's why, again, sorry, Jimmy, that's why Arsenal lost the tie. I lost this lost the title last season. I, I, I said it at the start of the season. Sorry. Sorry. I'm like, what did I do? <laughs> The oh strength in depth with that Man City have got, regardless who gets picked today, it's, yeah. it's going to be about the performance. It's going to be about not just winning, but winning in style, preparatory to what's going to happen next week and, and, and in the coming weeks. Arsenal taking on Newcastle United at St. James's Park. Um, Shay, please listen to Ozo's analysis. Now, to be honest, I know you know, you know Jimmy's coming to me because he think I'll be bad. I don't, I don't I, trust that. I don't <laughs> trust these two guys. Yet. They have won me no, already. No, 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 I will. So, so um, Newcastle actually have some injuries, mm. and yes, I know they're going to be playing at home. But if I, if I look at Liverpool, um, Newcastle's last game at home, a, the big game which was in the Champions League, right? They really didn't play. They didn't play that well. They would pick things. Uh, Newcastle. Oh, so you don't think that the game against Manchester United was a big game? We're talking about my United this season. They've not been playing like a big team, so <laughs> wow. I can't. I, def, I definitely can't. Give Thank you very much. No, no but Yo. but if, if you if you look at um, Newcastle, the way Newcastle perform, they, would, they, they they typically start the games really slow, but then towards the end they would always pick things up. So if you're Arsenal, you, you want to, to go there, early. you want to get them early, get the goals early, if possible, get two goals early. Then you can quiet down the crowd. Do not go there and try to rile the crowd up because if you do that, then you're going to actually have the crowd on Newcastle side, which would actually make the game difficult for you. So, so I'd say Arsenal, you, Arsenal yeah. win the game 2-1. 
I'll, t- I'll go for a 2-1 two two one. Arsenal win. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go 2-0, uh, replica, replica of what happened last season. But Shea, um, I think I haven't weighed my options. I haven't seen um, what Puja can do to my um, ego and my confidence. I would rather go with you. Um, you're the devil you know and I'm familiar with is better than the, the spur that you hit. <laughs> 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 I, I think you'll be right in, in, in coming to me because um, objectively I think Arsenal will win the game yes it will be it will oh, be hot oh. it will be tough it will be rough Sam James's park will be, will be will be buzzing no doubt about that uh, but I for I think the, the wake up call the wake up call Ateta needed was the game within in, in the week to yeah. sort of almost um, tell his squad that well that's why you're squad players that's why you're not you're not playing and then the big gun comes in, and again, you, as an Arsenal that wants to contend for the title, you don't want to lose two games in a row. So from that viewpoint, there'll be very little motivating the players. I'm sure they'll be pumped up to then know that this is one of the, big, one of the biggest games, games. Again, rivals contending for the title to sort yeah. of put the marker down. The game might stay on for 70, 75 minutes, but Arsenal, I'm sure, will find a way. No doubt about that. Arsenal will surely find a way. So let's go to X Space right now. Uh, Senator, you're here on the space. Can I get your thoughts on the Arsenal Newcastle game? Uh, you can speak when you're ready. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Uh, it's excited to be here today. Um, I don't know. A lot of people are talking about uh, this uh, Arsenal uh, Newcastle United match. Uh, I don't see Arsenal winning that match at all. Why not? I don't see Arsenal winning that match. Arsenal are uh, teams that are very, very good in the first half. Like, from first half to 65, 70 minutes, Arsenal are doing very well. And if you are able to really uh, pull through and body them up to after 75, 70 minutes, just forget about Chelsea match because Chelsea were not a very good team in that match. So I see uh, uh, a Newcastle 2-1 win against Arsenal. 2-1 win against Arsenal. I see Newcastle 2-1 win, yes, against Arsenal in, okay. to, in today's okay. match. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, El Boogie, you're also on yeah. the line. I appreciate you. Do uh, you want to give me your thoughts on Arsenal taking on Newcastle at St. James's Park? Hi, my man, Jimmy. Good morning. Um, How you doing, bro? Yeah, hi, Ozzo. Morning, I'm all right, morning. my man. Yeah, hi. Um, are you guys online? I'm trying to watch you guys on YouTube uh, at the same time. Yeah, we, are we, you guys we, online? We, we, we're, we're not live on YouTube, but you can watch episodes of on this Monday. show on YouTube. We, we upload the, the space on, on Monday. Mondays. Okay. Um, so to the game, it's a really, really... I'm up early already, went clubbing, and just getting back, it's about 6 o'clock. But um, honestly, I'm very scared, Jimmy. You know me. I'm a gunner. Why? Why are you scared? Because of West Ham? Arsenal. The reason is Newcastle coming up uh, on a high from the win on uh, against United, and we are coming into this game on the back of a loss. So I'm still going to stay optimistic. I'll take a draw right now. Honestly, I'm not being. I'm not trying to sound pessimistic or none of that. Your confidence is not a hundred percent right now. It's not Jimmy, and the reason is this: playing Jorginho and Rice and all the guy. That midfield is missing something. If Thomas Partey was fit and he was going to play, I'll be more confident and very vibrant. So and we need that. to just the stop injury... this Havertz idea. Please. I've been exactly. waiting for somebody to say that, but exactly. I just think we need to put that to bed one time and one time only. Just like, could we just play how and we played last year? ESR. Yeah, and then I don't ESR even think ESR is the answer, up, but yeah, I just feel like play Trossard in that if you must play someone in that position. I just did not like the way Jorginho was brushed up the ball, ball at Upton Park on Wednesday. He was too lightweight in central midfield when he's chasing the, the game. The game just passes him by. He's an he elder statesman. He he's an elder statesman. That. Thanks so much, my brother. I appreciate you. Thanks for the conversation as well. All right, let's move Absolutely. on to um, what has been called a suicide mission. <laughs> by many a pundits across um, across the world of football. Luton Town facing Liverpool. Please. <laughs> uh, to be honest, I this is one of those games where I don't need to use any statistics, no numbers, no tactical <laughs> analysis. <laughs> I just go Liverpool five or more goals. <laughs> I'm done. Like, I can't. It's one of those games you, you, you can't be. There's I, know, I, I, I know we always say like football is never played on paper, but this is um, one of those games where you just have to look, just, look you at what's happening You don't need to draw it up. That's just what it is. So I think Liverpool win by four or five Puja, you or take? more goals. Well, um... I think Liverpool will win, but um, 
a lot for Arsenal. Fans. We did not ask you oh, about oh, Arsenal. Oh, now. There's a deliberate reason. Do you know the host? No, 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 everyone. No, no, Liverpool is no, no, the host. I am the host of this show. Liverpool is Luton. You are a guest. positive. You are a guest for Arsenal. You are a guest. Let me give you the positive for Arsenal. Senator, I will off your mind. Let me give positive for Arsenal. You know, Arsenal fans. You know, for Newcastle. Right. They've they've not they've been beaten in ten in eight out of ten. At St. James's Park, they've been beaten in eight out of nine. Good start for Arsenal. Right. But you people are not seeing that because of the back foot of the losing against West Ham. But I'm giving you stats <laughs> that you should give me a credit for. You know, also, these are stats that, you know, should give you confidence. So, <laughs> so Boogeyman, you know, just have that confidence. <laughs> but on the flip side, you know, playing at St. James's Park, I He's think Arsenal will lose. <laughs> Yeah, true. <laughs> like very, very big one. <laughs> uh, we asked you about a different but, match. But, but for Liverpool the Liverpool, 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 Liverpool losing, you know, like also said, no start. No start needed. Bad place, um, <laughs> you know, struggling for Liverpool. They need a statement as well. Yeah, you they know, do. they've been in, in good yeah. form. Mm -hmm. They've not lost in twenty-two games. They, they should be seen as title contenders. I mean, they, they are. are. They are. Hundred percent. Uh, yeah. And you know, yeah. these are kind of but games. Based on their last season, you don't want to be too quick to say that. I know. Yeah. And you know, these are game. These these are kind of games you have to boost. You know, you know, scoring goals. You know, Salah have to continue. Nunes. Nunes. And they have been doing so well. So it's a statement game. You know, they have to stand statement as well, just like the State against Bournemouth. Uh, Shay, are you with these guys, or you have a difference of opinion? Tested players, I don't care how good a player you are, I don't care how talented you are. There's that moment of 5%, 10% switch off. We're only playing Luton. They're not doing so well. So managers, I'm sure um, um, I'm, I'm sure the manager this week will be, will be on, the, on the case of the players. Everything is, is body language, his information will be a bit firm just to make sure the boys keep, keep yeah. stay on the ball. Otherwise, there's going to be that tendency to sort of switch off a little bit. And games like that, what you don't want at, this, at, at Luton Town's uh, home ground, Kevin's what? You don't want them to score first because then now the fans will take over. All of a sudden, they will be on, they become, right. they'll be under pressure. Also, even if they don't score right. first, the longer they stay in the game, the more confident they get and then the, the more despondent the Liverpool side will be. So any goal for Liverpool will be, will be key. I think they will win it, but I don't think it's going to be as easy as we all think. Uh, Senator, you have your hand up. I just want to get your thoughts. I want to use you to start off our analysis of probably the biggest game of the weekend. Um, Senator, what's your thoughts on Spurs taking on Chelsea? I'm a Chelsea fan. Uh, we, are, we are losing that match. Wow, you're a Chelsea fan. You said we are losing, we are losing that, that match 2 0. <laughs> we are losing the match 2 0. Like, we are doing it with, with our full chests. Ooh. We are trying to build right now. Ayo, ayo, yo, yo. Shoo. See this guy <laughs> laughing. <laughs> all right. Is it going to be all laughs for, <laughs> for Tottenham? Because, Shay, tell me. How is this match going to play out? Tabletop in Tottenham Hotspur. Uh, they seem to be playing with the kind of vigor that Arsenal had last season. They don't have any Europe to worry about. Uh, they don't have the 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 juggernaut of Harry Kane to worry about. Although they are creating another juggernaut in uh, Son. But then again, Chelsea seem to have fallen back into their ways. I haven't had something of a resurgence um, a couple of weeks ago. Where do you think this game will go in terms of direction of winnings? Or, and where do you think it will be won and lost? Every good manager will tell you uh, what we see in the league is momentum. And the momentum is very much with um, right. Angie's um, team at the moment. Um, in what they, they've been doing, I think it's just simplified the whole thing. I like his post-match um, uh, interview after the demolition of Crystal Palace. Which, and it and says statistically that they had that the hardest working team in the league. And when you begin to marry hard work uh, with talented players, where there's less injuries, where the squad is rich enough, because if you look at the guys on the bench at the moment, we have a Dyer there, we have Ben Davies. These are tested players who will come in and do a job. Hoybeer played a lot in the past few seasons, is on the bench at the moment. So in terms of strength and depth, I think they've, they, they've, got, they've got the cover. Where they're probably they'd be, they'd be a little bit light for me is in the, in the center forward position. An injury to human song right now spells doom for them. I know Richardson can play in that position, but it's not human song it's, in, it's in, not in a way. So enough. it's not consistent enough, absolutely. So I'd like to think Angie will be looking in the January window to sort of strengthen that area. I'm not sure they, they I don't, I'm not sure they can ever replace Hurricane. But, but I think they can, they can the bring somebody in, in that. that stand. 
Absolutely. They, they, they've got now who, who comes in and, and hit the ground running, especially in January. You so know, what, what I mean, is Chelsea's difficulty. chance in this game? Chelsea's chance it would be, it's going to be tough. I was at Stamford Bridge in midweek to watch them against Blackburn. Um, of course, they, they fielded a, a half uh, a, a squad in, in, in a way, uh, in, in the fact that they just dressed some players. But again, in terms of confidence, in terms of momentum, I don't see them uh, doing much against um, a, a sports side who will be think, looking over their shoulder and are thinking, well, we don't even want the international break. We just so want to keep going. there was nothing in that Blackburn game um, that gave you confidence that Chelsea could do something in this game? It was a game that was won even before the game was played. And again, like I said, it was a runner for players that are just coming back from injuries. The, the, the big hitters didn't play in that game, obviously. It makes sense to sort of rest them for Monday. Uh, I understand that. Uh, but again, would that give them enough um, confidence to sort of go into the sports game? Of course, they know it's, it's going to be a different game. Um, I, th I think sports will win. It, yes, the atmosphere will be brilliant. I'll be there myself personally to sort of um, grace the occasion. Oh, uh, nice. But I don't nice. think there's any. I don't think there's anything stopping sports at the moment. Um, again, if you look at the next five games, which is always how I, I always try to get the manager's hat on. They'll be playing after the after this game on Monday. They play Wolves away. They play Aston, Aston Villa at home. They, they are, then they will be away to Man City. Then they'll be yeah. home to West Ham and then home to Newcastle. So if you begin to look that, do you want to sort of ruffle the feather? Do you want to sort of have a, 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 a loss or a draw that then affect the momentum? Managers will always want to make sure the players play well in the big games to give them the momentum to sort of build going forward. Okay, so Do I think they will win the league, though? Only time will tell. We've gone, we've gone through possibilities now. It's time for you to tell me exactly, exactly. What's the scoreline going to be? 2 nil Spurs. 2 nil Spurs. Mm. Um, so what do you think the scoreline will be? Uh, actually, I think Spurs drop points in this game. Yes, uh, Chelsea. You want them or you think they will? No, no, I think they would uh, simply because, I mean, uh, earlier in the show we said we do we don't feel that the the, uh, the Man United players are playing for Ten Hag. If you look at the Chelsea players, they're kind of buying into what their manager uh, is, is selling. Right. And they also know that this is their manager's homecoming. He's going to, he's coming back to sports. And it's one of those games where you want to perform for the manager because you want him to do well. You want him to look good on the day. Yep. So it's it's also, it's a game that is also self-motivating for the players because they know that they, they want to get a result for him. So I believe uh, Chelsea will actually play, pretty much put on their best performance uh, in the season. So I, I see sports dropping points. I see it being a draw. I'd say 1-1 one, one draw, actually. Puja, what's your call? <laughs> Mr. Spurs, uh, <laughs> what do you take well, us to 1960? No, no uh, of course, you know. Um, I don't think, you know, Chelsea can do, you know, um, any damage right now for Spurs. Um, they are playing so well. You know, they have, you know, they have rested players, like um, Shea said. Um, they have um, a lot of players playing well together. You know, they have a very good, you know, score depth to a large extent. And um, against the Chelsea side, who... Oh, you know, like the Blackburn game, there's nothing that can actually bring up a good momentum or a confident booster in quotes in terms of going to this game, because they didn't play their main team. You know, um, maybe Nostelli got the goal, but it wasn't the regular Chelsea under Pochettino now. And Pochettino, <coughs> um, yeah. he has a lot of players he's still testing. You know, um, James is still coming on. You know, as substitute, so I don't really see how they want to phantom a win. Or maybe a draw you know, at what at lane. I think um, this is a straight win for, for Spurs. A straight win for Spurs. And it's a clean sheet as well. <laughs> Two nil. A clean sheet. Wow. Chelsea is that bad in your eyes. If you're a fan of any of the teams that are playing today, please make sure you enjoy the game with a ice cold, ice cold can, bottle, or mug of the world's most sought after, the King of Beers, Budweiser. That's what I will be doing, starting, of course, from. 1 30 p.m where manchester united will be taking on fulham that's the first game that will be on you've heard our predictions you've heard our opinions also any final word from you yeah i mean just uh, looking forward to the game um the first game for me is a very important one when you come to united and and uh, eric ten Hag. the big one today is definitely arsenal away at newcastle yes we've talked we've spoken about um teams in these statements wins we felt like liverpool should have a statement today against uh luton we feel like man city should have a statement as well against Bournemouth. If you're Arsenal, I think it was either Shea or Puja that said it as well, where Arsenal need to make a statement against Newcastle and go out there and win the game. And, and prove that they're, and, ready, and, for and the prove they're ready for the title. Puja. 
Well, um, you know, just enjoy the game. Don't gloat. Well, um, you know, I think 10 games in, teams you know their targets, you know their objectives. I don't think, you know, um, you will say it's early in court anymore. It's 10 games already into the season. So if you want to win the league, if you want to finish in the top four, if you want to go to Europe, and if you want to fight relegation, the time is now. And I think teams are shaping up. And of course, that's <laughs> 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 you know, you know, you know, he listen, a, 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 man, a man can't help himself. <laughs> you can't help himself. Well, I'm telling you. The, 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 the biggest of the bunch, you know, today is that the Castro has. Pujar can't help himself. Why would I talk about him? Of course, let's <laughs> enjoy the game. Of, <laughs> the biggest game, as as not the Castro. Let's enjoy it as well. And on Monday, sports against Chelsea. <laughs> Shay, I know you will be at. Uh, the toilet bowl, sorry, the Tottenham Stadium. Oh, yeah, yeah. What's your final bowl. word for I the like weekend? That. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> encouraging guys to go and support your team, to go and watch the game. Uh, watch the games, whatever game you go to, either on TV, either go into the stadium. Please don't forget our NPFL as well. Uh, when I joined yes, the in this, we need to grow it somehow. Um, but again, yeah, we say the biggest game is going to be Newcastle Arsenal. We know that. We well, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure why I said Arsenal will win. That was me uh, speaking objectively. I still think they will, they will win. Uh, but again, watch out for the space. Spurs <laughs> Chelsea will be a cracking game, and if Spurs can remain top after their next five games, they stand a chance. But again, it's still very, very young. All Ten right. games in. Um, no, no, no title will be, will be, will be one or loss at the moment. But again, people are building up towards it. So, enjoy the weekend, guys. All right, that is, of course, uh, the best way to put it. Enjoy the weekend because, of course, we do have the pleasure of watching the world's most famous, most watched, and most exciting league in the world. That is the English Premier League, and we are brought to you by an official beer, the King of Beers, when it comes to the Premier League and, of course, the world. Budweiser. It is Budweiser's Kings of Football Show. I want to remind you again, you can follow us on all our social media platforms. That is at Budweiser Nigeria on Instagram and Budweiser NG on X Space. You can catch up episodes of this on YouTube. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, and of course hit the notification so you can get to find out exactly when we drop new episodes. I am King Jimmy to most, but for now just call me Jimmy. Thanks for watching. Peace, love, and respect. Oh, 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 oh,